On Thursday, The New York Times reported President Trump um, pressured senior Senate Republicans over the summer, including the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, to drop Mueller's probe into alleged ties between the Trump campaign and Russia, news coming amidst reports that Mueller's investigators recently questioned senior White House adviser and Trump's son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, over a meeting with a Russian ambassador during the presidential transition. Right. And this is actually one of the reasons why this switch isn't going to happen, because I don't think Pompeo is confirmable by the Senate, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, because we've learned a lot more of his implication in the Russian story. The Kushner meeting was reported as kind of the last, one of the last things that Mueller had to put into place before this plea agreement that people have been talking about with Mike Flynn. And that suggests that there's more news about to drop regarding Mike Flynn that I think is going to really dramatically change how Republicans take the Russian investigation. Um, somehow, you know, Flynn had been uh, avoiding discussing plea agreements for months and months and months, and then really in the last two weeks, all of a sudden, it seems like it's about to happen. Mueller has more leverage over Flynn in the last couple weeks. It may be Turkey, because a key witness in New York has turned state's evidence uh, and, and apparently has information on Flynn. I think there's some other information. And so Flynn, we expect, is moving towards a plea agreement. Uh, we expect, or I expect, that's going to add a lot more pressure on Trump. And I've been saying for months that the way to get to Kushner is through Flynn, because a lot of the events uh, in which Flynn was involved, such as meeting with Sergei Kislyak in, in December, uh, they connect very closely with activities that Kushner is known to be involved with. So that seems to be where things are moving. And, you know, this, this Pompeo news seems impossible against that background, because Pompeo has helped Trump to cover up this Russia thing. And I don't see Bob Corker and I don't see Marco Rubio, who are both Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, members, I don't see them supporting Pompeo having an even bigger role in the administration uh, as, this, as this Russia stuff kind and, of opens up. And Flynn and Turkey, can you explain what's been uncovered at this point? So Flynn um, was a consultant for, uh, for the Turkish government, but through some cutouts, right? And he uh, is alleged to have, A, discussed on two different occasions, basically kidnapping a cleric who lives in, in Pennsylvania that um, the Turkish government considers one of their big enemies. He, they, they blame him for the attempted coup earlier in the year. Um, so that's one thing, is that he has talked about kidnapping an American permanent resident uh, on behalf of another government. The other thing is that um, there was a guy named Reza Zarab who... Uh, was charged in a laundering, a, a sanctions avoidance laundering case in New York, basically laundering money to get gold to Iran. Uh, that, that connects very closely with, with Turkey's president. But um, the, that guy, Zarab, uh, made a plea agreement, basically. And that just came out this week. The trial in which he is testifying is rolling out. But he is believed to have some information about uh, Flynn's efforts to free him uh, on behalf of the Turkish government. And again, this is another case where Flynn didn't disclose these monies. Uh, he was working as the transition national security advisor and being paid by a foreign government. There's a much stronger case against him on this Turkish stuff, uh, even than on the Russian stuff. And so I think not only is it easier to charge him with this stuff, and that would be kind of, kind of similar to what happened to Paul Manafort, but also um, it would, one of the things that has re been reported to happen is it would implicate his son, Mike Flynn Jr., who um, was involved in some of these things. And so one of, the, one of the motives that Flynn might have for flipping, for cooperating with Mueller, is to keep his son out of prison. Mm. And finally, do you think this could account for all these developments this week, could account for the further unraveling of President Trump, right, tweeting out these um, racist, Islamophobic videos uh, talking about, you know, uh, 
President Obama, once again, as he led the birther movement, Trump did, um, uh, and, and all of the things he's done, you know, the Pocahontas con uh, comments in the midst of a Navajo code talker ceremony in the Oval Office in front of a uh, portrait of President Andrew Jackson, but all of this coming one after the other has Republicans scratching their heads as well. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to measure the next outrage from the president, but I do think that he's that he's hearing footsteps. I do think he continues to try and convince those around him that he's not at any risk of this investigation. That's ridiculous at this point. It's clear that Mueller is investigating him for obstruction, if not far more, and these attempts to distract attention. But I also think, and this will segue into your next piece, but I also think he's also attempting to distract from the fact that he's about to, in the name of tax reform, carry out this vast looting of the American poor and middle class. So, you know, it serves two purposes, distract from Russia, but also distract from the tax bill that they're rushing through Congress this week. Well, Marcy Willer, I want to thank you so much for being with us, independent journalist who covers national security and civil liberties, runs the website emptywheel.net. We'll link to your Peace, throwing water on the Pompeo to state move. This is Democracy. And when we come back, we go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to talk about a little known provision of the tax law that has to do with opening up the Arctic to dr drilling. And then we will go to Mogadishu. We'll talk about the latest on a massacre that took place there. What was the U.S. involvement? And finally, we'll look at the impeach Trump movement. Stay with us.